please read the readings before listening to the homily. In the Gospel, when the other apostles are looking at their feet, hoping someone else will be the first to answer, it's Peter who does answer. And he gets it right. So often Peter is the first to speak or the first to act. But Jesus makes it clear to him that though he is to be appointed first among the apostles, this insight of his is not something for him to take pride in. It's not his achievement. It's a gift from God enabling him to recognise who Jesus is. And that's true for every single one of us who've become a disciple of Jesus. It's by God's gift. In the first reading, Peter doesn't burst through his prison bars like a superhero in a comic. He doesn't cobble together escape equipment out of things found lying around in the jail, like some TV adventure from the 70s. No. He's almost entirely passive. The angel has to tell him, put your sandals on. It's only when he's outside that he realises it's all for real. His escape is a gift from God, not his own achievement, given him so he can continue, for the time being, until he is eventually martyred, can continue the work he's been trusted with. In the second reading, Paul's writing to Timothy, whom he taught, who spent so much time with him, and Timothy will understand what he's getting at. The evil attempts that he prays to be spared are not the attempts to martyrdom, he knows he will be martyred sooner or later. No, the evil he fears is that he might crack. He might give in and turn aside from the mission that Jesus has given him. That he might surrender his faith to save his life. That's the evil he dreads. And he's confident God will preserve him from it, and indeed, like Peter, Paul too was martyred. These two great apostles were such different characters, different personalities, different methods of working, and they each built up the church in its infancy. It's true of the church today, even at the level of an individual parish, perhaps even at the level of a single family, that the church is built up when people with different personalities and characters and gifts use them, each playing to their own strengths, using their own gifts, for the work of God. It is utter folly to expect everyone in a parish to do everything the same way, to view everything the same way. But when we put together and use each faithful to our own gifts, the opportunities God gives us, then a parish, a diocese, a global church, a family flourishes.